can you just explain what the last, you know, six, eight months have been like for you with everything that's gone on on a personal level? Uh, it's been really crazy. Um, and I mean, obviously everybody um, in this world could say that, um, you know, based on, you know, everything that has happened and, you know, has, you know, continued to happen. Um, but it's just been for me a time of a family, you know, uh, you know, staying with my uh, family, obviously, um, during quarantine, um, and all that stuff, uh, you know, spending for family time, you know, kids having, uh, zoom calls, um, for school and stuff like that. Um, you know, going through this whole process, obviously, obviously nobody has ever been through a process like this before. So, um, just being with my family, um, you know, continue, you know, to work out and, um, and, and do, and, you know, do that, do that stuff on that level. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's been, it's been crazy, you know, but, um, my, uh, main goal um, during, you know, that whole stretch um, when we were at home in San Diego was to, uh, you know, to take care and, and, re and recognize the people um, that are out there uh, risking their lives for, um, uh, for everybody, you know, um, during this, uh, through this uh, virus and um, stuff like that. So, um, that was one of my main goals early on when every, um, when everything happened. So, um, it's been a little bit of that and, and a lot of family. So, uh, it was, you know, good to be with the family um, for an uh, extended period of time. And, um, and yeah. Um, I, obviously, condolences on, on the loss of your son um, from the end of, of last season. Again, this first time we've talked to you since then. How do you cope with something like that? How, you know, how, how about dealing with that on top of everything that's gone on in the world? Well, my, my thing, you know, I think what gives me strength um, is, uh, you know, there's – you find out there that there's a lot of stories of, of people, um, you know, that obviously stuff like that has happened to them, you know, losing a family member. And um, that was, uh, you know, obviously the first time that's happened to me, you know, on, you know, on a level uh, of that magnitude. Um, but, you know, just hearing a lot of other people, um, hearing their voices, you know, and their experiences and stuff like that. So um, I don't think you can ever really fully cope with it. You know what I'm saying? I have my days. Um, but at the same time, when you, um, there's thousands and thousands of people who, who reached out to me um, about their experiences and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty, that's pretty much what it is. Just last thing on that. Do you know what happened? I mean, did the doctor say what the cause was? Is there uh, yeah. any? Thank you, Marv. Yep. So oh, Tim next. Hey Marv. Good to see you. Thanks for taking the time. No um, first off, condolences, obviously, to you and, and your family for, for, you know, the situation you had to deal with. But a football question for you. You know, obviously, you coming back, uh, Kenny, um, Danny, you all had at least 60 catches, 675 yards. You've got to expect that. And we've seen, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that tight ends really, you know, come into their own that second season, um, have big seasons. Just with the weapons that you have returning and, and hot, you know, the expectations there, just – how explosive can you expect this passing game to be with, with Matthew healthy and a second year in this system? Are you excited for, for what you guys have on, on that side of the ball? Oh, we're, we're definitely excited. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be big, you know, just because um, obviously, as you mentioned, you know, the people that we have, um, you know, you look to the left, you look to the right, um, and, and we have ballers, you know. So um, that's something that's very exciting. And obviously this is our second year um, in Bevel's offense, which we love. Um, and, and yeah, so it's the, the excitement is definitely up, um, and we're just glad that you know we're all in here together and uh, finally getting some football done. Um, so that that's it's been big, you know, to come up here, you know, and see and see my brothers and um, and really go out there and, and not really miss a beat, you know, just because um, we're all we all have experience in, in this offense, obviously, and obviously we've added um, new pieces. Um, that are going to come in and, and do great. So, um, yeah, the sky's the limit, you know, but um, obviously we just have to continue to work, you know, and that's what we do um, every day. So, uh, yeah, it's exciting. Mike Rothstein. Hey, Marv, how are you? Um, echoing, obviously, condolences that everyone else has said. I, I want to hit on that topic a little bit more. What was that first couple of weeks like? Because I think it was what, 24, 36 hours after the game, you – go you know and you're in Ford Field like what what mentally was that like for you um it was just I, I'm just gonna say this you know it was it was an experience that that I very that I very much appreciated um from you know the, and the standpoints from the from the Lions um you know showing uh, showing love and stuff like that and the fans and the teammates um it was just it was just a, a powerful moment that I that that I think was was good for us um and good for my family 
Um, so yeah, that's that's pretty much all I'll say about that. Um, but um, you know, it, it's you know my my son's in a, in a better place, you know. So uh, that that makes me, that makes me happy, and, uh, and that's you know, that's just that's it for that topic. What with between that and obviously your family being out in California, was there any thought that you maybe weren't going to play this season and, and just stay in California and kind of wait till next year with the pandemic and obviously everything else going on? No, I was there for about eight months. You know, it's time to play, play football. <laughs> Thanks, man. So John Neo, then Kyle. Uh, Mark, how did you handle the – I guess the football side of preparation this off season, given everything that was going on. And, and then I guess one question also following up on others, is your family, are you going to, with online school and everything else, are, are, you, are they going to stay there? Are they going to be here? How are you handling that decision if you've already made it? Uh, handling the, the football side of things. Um, uh, well, I have a, a training facility at my house in San Diego, so um, it was just business as usual. Um, you know, have a, have a good like 60 yard turf field, um, have a, a lot of things that I could do there um, where I could um, do this, the same thing. I was in the sand a lot. I have a, a sand court, so um, I pretty much was, you know, getting it, getting it in every day and grinding. And um, it, it actually, you know, gave me, um, gave me a lot in terms of uh, what well, did a lot for me in terms of, you know, just being ready you know, and, and having my body ready and prepared and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty much business as usual. Um, what I do in the off season in terms of, um, you know, how I prep, how, how I prepare and, um, how, how I get, um, get into this thing. Um, but in terms of the family, um, they will be in San Diego, but I'm obviously they're online. So they could, you know, go back and forth if, um, if, if need be, um, obviously we've, we split half and half from, Right. from here to San Diego um, after the season we you know take off to San Diego um, this year it is, it's a little bit different you know and I think mainly because you know my kids are getting older and you know they're in sports and stuff like that so um, you know uh, in terms of that you know that fall that being being in sports and stuff like that out there in San Diego I think that was a, a part of it and it was that was going to happen even before the pandemic started so um, you know we have a we have a little process and and, and obviously it could change um, with them uh, having school online, but uh, they end up going back to school, I think in September over there in um, California, uh, se se around September 11th, around or 10th or 11th or whatever in California. So they'll be there and they'll come up here when, um, whenever. So it's a good, it's a good little uh, plan that was already uh, in motion. That was a plan that was already in motion, but I mean, it's gonna be tough for you, no? I mean, especially having been together as much this last several months to be separated a little more than normal. Uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, just like every, just like everybody doing. You take take it day by day, week by week. If I want them to come up here, then they'll be up here. So it's no big deal. Thanks, Mark. Hey, we'll go last question with Kyle. Got two for you, Mark. Uh, the first one: Did you take a a, a plane to Oregon or someplace for to get a, a dog? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, the... I took, a, took a plane to Oregon to get a, a dog and I mean, people who know me know I'm not a, really an animal person, but you know, my, my wife and my kids are definitely, you know, uh, animal person has people and been asking me for a dog for a while. So, um, you know, I, I, I really like Dobermans. We got a European Doberman, a specific, it had to be like a specific dog for me. So, um, yeah, so I, I think, I think eight months ago, eight or so months ago, we put in for uh, for a European Doberman, um, so um, he, he was ready. He's he, he's like nine weeks now. So yeah, we flew we flew to Oregon um, <laughs> to, to pick him up. That, yeah. There's a lot of different ways to get a dog. That's I, I haven't heard that one before. What was so special about either this dog or this breed that you wanted to? Well, I think it's just because it's our it's, it's our first dog, you know. Um, and in terms of you know, we didn't want to drive over there, um, you know, twenty something hours, you know, to to pick up the dog because. You know, I, I mean, that was for me. You know, I was like, dang, we, let's just go pick him up, to uh, take him back. So we we, uh, we flew out that day. Um, we spent an hour over there, um, um, had some wine with the, the people, and then uh, and then took right back off. So that was uh, that was good. But I told my wife, I was like, this is this is already an expensive dog. If I'm over here, <laughs> my first time on a private jet, I'm, I'm yeah. picking up a dang dog. So yeah, yeah, his name is Fuego. So who uh who flew up there for the dog, and what'd you guys name him? Uh, me and my wife flew up. 
We yeah. flew up, uh, went, went over there, um, and we named him Fuego. He's a, he's a, a red European Doberman. Yeah, he's a right beast. And, and the last real quick question I got for you, just uh, uh, I'm curious your thoughts. I know it's super early, but your thoughts on uh, the rookie, Quintez Cephas. Oh, I, I mean, obviously, um, you know, we, we got acquainted um, this offseason. Um, he came up to the good old BZN training facility um, and got some good work in. I know you guys probably seen it. Um, yeah, so I was out, out there. He um, trained with me for a couple of days, uh, drove up from Arizona or whatever, and, uh, and, and we got some good work in. So, yeah, definitely he's, he has, definitely has the tools uh, in terms of, the, you know, the, his strength, his explosiveness. Dude could jump out the gym, you know. So, um, you know, it, it'd be it'd be great to see him go, you know, once we start really picking everything up. All right, Justin, we got time for one more. Hey, Marv, good to see you. Um, what, one more on on Cephas. Uh, when Kenny came into the league, you and you and Golden got him right real quick, and he was contributing almost immediately. Um, what, what can you take from that experience now with you and Danny and, and getting uh, Quintez ready to go right out the gate, especially with such a, a short practice window here? Well, I think that's what we do. You know, when you've been in the league for this for this long, um, you know, you, you know, and the type of person that people that we are, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's always the help, you know what I'm saying? Just because if you help somebody, that's just going to make the team better, you know what I'm saying? And you, especially when you see potential in somebody, you know what I'm saying? And we, we've seen that with Kenny and, and you already, you obviously, you know how, how that, how that uh, turned out, you know, um, and, you know, it's not just it's just not just for you know one particular person you know we do that for everybody for all rookies you know what I'm saying rookies who's who's who, if, even if they came in tomorrow you know we'll treat them all the same and hey you know stick with us you know and, and you'll and you'll you'll know the way you know and normally you know the especially the people who are very motivated will do that you know and that's and we see that in him um, and you know we're just we're just gonna go out here and, and training camp and. And, and let the young man do what he does. You know, it's the same for um, the same for all the the young um, you know receivers that we have. So um, he is like he is our only really uh, rookie. So you know we could we could uh, pick on him a little bit more. So uh, so yeah, it it'll be exciting.